Hello, so today I'm going to talk about the Calvin Cycle and I'm going to discuss the mechanism in which the Calvin Cycle uses to convert CO2 into glucose. So there's actually three steps in the Calvin Cycle and in our first step we're going to be using D-ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate in order to reduce the CO2 into D3-phosphoglycerate. At that point two molecules will be made and those will be converted into two molecules of D-glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate, okay? And then at that point, that's going to be converted into glucose. That's our third step of the phase. So this is going to be occurring in the dark phase of photosynthesis. In our first phase of photosynthesis, the light phase, we accumulated our ATP and our NADPH, which is needed for the Calvin cycle. Okay, so the very first step that happens, we have our D-ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate, which looks like this. Okay, so I'll write that out for us. D-ribulose... 1,5. Okay, so what's going to happen here is our enzyme Rubisco is going to have its lysine, one of the lysines on it, it's going to act as a base, okay? And it's going to extract this hydrogen right here, okay? That's on the third carbon. So it's going to come in here going to take that hydrogen away. This bond is then going to transfer up here to form a double bond. This bond is going to come over to the oxygen and this oxygen is going to end up just grabbing an H to get rid of that negative charge, okay? So that's just going to, so we can skip us up. So now at this point what we have, let's draw it out. This is, by the way, kind of an intermediate phase, okay? So you're not going to be able to actually extract this molecule if you were trying to. But I'm just going to show it in this way to understand how the process is actually occurring. Okay, so now we actually have just an OH here. We have a double bond that's formed here. An OH here. Remember, we got rid of that H. And this stays the same, okay? So what actually occurs here now is the same enzyme, Rubisco, is going to have a hist histamine. Okay, it's right here, it's going to act as a base again, and it's going to take this hydrogen right here off of this O, off of this oxygen. So it comes in, it takes it, there's a little bond in between here, that pops on over here. So now this is actually going to come out Okay, takes the hydrogen, this bond pops over here, it's going to pop this bond out, act electrophilically, it's going to take, it's going to attach that C, it's going to pop a bond over to the oxygen like that. Okay, so now at this point, our CO2 is attached to our molecule. And what we're going to have now is this. Okay, I got our OH, and now we have a CO2 negative, okay? Because that negative, this bond came over here, it's making it negative, okay? This is going to be a double bond, and this hasn't been changed at all yet, still. All right, hopefully everybody can see that well on here. So now at this point, what's going to happen is a water molecule is actually going to come in it's going to attack our carbonyl group right here, okay? So, one of the lone pairs of electrons is going to attack. That bond pops onto that oxygen right there. And now we end up with 
this intermediate. This has not changed at all. We still have a CO2 negative right there. Now that we have O negative here, OH, it's an OH2, of course, but just for simple purposes, it's an OH now because a base is going to come in and extract a hydrogen, okay? So, what happens now, this bond right here between the, o, the oxygen and the hydrogen is going to come over here. Which is then going to pop this base right this this bond right here, sorry, up here. Alright. This is how we get them to split in half because we need to form two molecules of the D3 phosphoglycerate. Okay. So this is what we end up getting. Get And draw that's our negative okay our two electrons that were popped up onto there okay so that's the top portion of it if you want to split it in half you can look at it like this this is going to be one molecule and here's going to be our other molecule down here okay one carbon two carbons three carbons one two three all right so the top part looks like that once it splits. Our bottom part is going to look like this at that point. Okay. Now this already looks exactly how we want it to look. This is one mo mole, of, or one molecule, sorry, however you want to look at it, of D3 phosphoglycerate, okay? Now we actually get two out of this, so what happens here is our lysine from up here, it grabbed the H, so it's got that H attached to it, and this lone pair of electrons is going to come over and it's going to take that hydrogen back, okay? And what we're going to get at this point is another molecule of D3 phosphoglycerate. Okay? You can see them. This is just upside down version of that. All right? So that is step one of the Calvin cycle. Now we can move on to the second step, which is converting both of our molecules of D3-phosphoglycerate into our d high 3 phosphate okay? So let's go ahead and redraw that now. All right, D3, phosphoglycerate. Okay, now this is where our ATP is going to come in hand that we just created in the light phase of photosynthesis. So ATP is going to be used, and we're going to end up adding a phosphate group to this carbon right here, okay? It's actually going to bump off the OH. So what we end up getting is this. And like I said before, I'm not concerned with the enzymes that are doing this. If you 
are in a biochemistry class, then you need to know all the enzymes, but that's not the purpose of this video. Okay, so however the, mo the enzyme does this, um, I'm not really sure, but that's what happens. Okay, so at this point, now we're going to use our NADPH, like that we made from the light phase, and we're going to reduce this, okay? So NADPH is going to give up an electron, okay? I mean a uh, hydrogen, sorry, which is then going to attack this carbon, which is going to pop off our phosphate group, okay? So that leaves us with That leaves us with our D glyceraldehyde three phosphate, okay? Which is needed in order to make our glucose. <clears throat> so the only thing that happened here is our D3 phosphoglycerate was reduced. The only difference you can see is just that. Okay, so okay. So once we get our two molecules of our D-glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate, we're going to convert those into D-fructose-6-phosphate, okay? So I'm going to draw both of them here to show how they end up connecting to each other, okay? Okay, so this is D-glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. It's just our enolate form, okay? And pretty simple, I would think, to just realize how these bonds are moving around in order to form that, okay? So it can be in this form or this form. This is the more stable form in our keto form. Okay, so what's actually going to end up happening here is these, this lone pair of electrons is going to attack our carbon right here. make this bond come over here. Now these are going to be connected and what we're going to have is this. Okay, and this is D fructose one six bis phosphate. All right. Now at this point, what's going to happen is a water molecule can come in here. Its lone pair of electrons is going to attack this carbon right here. It's going to kick off the phosphate group. Okay. We don't want that phosphate anymore. Now we just have an OH up here. That's the only difference. And keep in mind the chemistry of this, where the OHs are going to lie on the right or the left. It's all dependent on how the enzyme does it. Okay, so say you were to try to do this in the lab, there would be it would be very difficult in order to make our, hyd our, our uh, alcohols go on the preferred side. Okay, so at this point, what we have now is D-fructose 6-phosphate. And I'm not writing down the enzyme names. That's something that you could easily get yourself by just looking on Google. 
Okay, so now that we have D-fructose 6-phosphate, we're going to convert it into D-glucose. And how this is going to happen is we've got our two hydrogens here. And the base is going to come in and extract one. And it's going to be the hydrogen that's axial to our carbonyl group here because that's the more stable form of doing it. Okay, This bond is then going to come right here. This is going to pop onto the oxygen right there. And what we're going to form now is this. These are all intermediate products, by the way. So we've got our double one right here. So this negative charge right here just grabbed another proton. And what's going to happen now is this lone pair of electrons is going to pop on down here. And this double bond is then going to come out and grab a proton. All right? And we end up with this product. That's our hydrogen we just grabbed. And at this point, this molecule will then be converted into glucose by having an OH attack here. And it's going to uh, pop off our phosphate. The enzyme, of course, is going to be doing all this. So. This is what we end up getting. Just like that. So the only difference here, this is our D glucose. And that is the final steps of the Calvin cycle.